Hey there, welcome back to The Harry Wolf Show. This is week three. Uh, in case you are new here, this is the show where I find news from the past week and I gather together in one nice little show that you can then watch in your morning routine. It has news about information from tech to music to movies, anything that's uh, popular and uh, things that you should know about, I'm here to tell you about them as well. It's definitely going to lean towards tech, but that's hopefully why you're here and why you're still watching me talk to you. Without further ado, let's get into the first item of the week. Webpack, your beloved bundle manager for JavaScript, has just released a new blog post talking about new funding that they got from the Mozilla Open Source Software Fund. The big news here is that Mozilla invested $125,000 so that Webpack could spend engineering resources to make WebAssembly a first class module type. That's a lot of words. Uh, if you don't know what WebAssembly is, it's a compiled to target for languages other than JavaScript, which means that you can take C++ or Rust code and actually compile it down to WebAssembly that you can then use that WebAssembly code in your JavaScript applications, making non-JS code accessible in the browser or Node, which is very exciting. This investment by Mozilla will actually make it even easier for you to use WebAssembly in your JavaScript applications. And examples on the blog post about how you can simply have a .cpp, that's C++ file, and then just import that as if it was its own JS file as well. This is just the right move that WebAssembly needs to actually gain traction for it to actually reach critical adoption. Right now there's a lot of friction to getting WebAssembly running in your application and by having it be a first class citizen in Webpack, hopefully we'll see WebAssembly's adoption rate just skyrocket. And that could only be good things for the web. In scarier news, NPM found some malware on their registry this past week. There's a popular package named CrossM and it was found that there was a duplicate package name just with a slight modification that was name squatting and whenever people would use that package it would actually send your sensitive environment variables to a remote server. Environment variables such as API key equals your token were actually getting hijacked and sent to some malicious user somewhere in the internet sphere. Luckily, it didn't affect too many people, but this is definitely going to be a thing to watch out for because as NPM grows in popularity, that attack vector grows as well, where there is the chance for gaining from being a bad actor, you'll see people increasingly have that behavior, which sucks. When things are young and new, you can kind of just lean on the good intentions of people and their behaviors, but as things get more popular and people see that they can take advantage for their own self good, you're gonna see this start increasing more and more. Luckily, this attack was caught pretty quickly and not too many people were harmed, but it's a thing to definitely keep in mind as you go forward. Hopefully you know what Rick and Morty is. It's an amazing cartoon on Adult Swim on Cartoon Network. It just started its third season. I think there's only been one or two episodes that's aired so far. But there was recently a uh, video posted on YouTube about the composer behind the Rick and Morty music. This is a short five minute video, but it's one that was very entertaining. It was filmed pretty creatively and some interesting information was shared in the video, such as, did you know that the theme song for Rick and Morty actually wasn't made for Rick and Morty? It was made for a different show, they used it as temporary audio, and it kind of stuck and people liked it, and that became the theme song. And there's other good information in there, but if you are a fan of Rick and Morty, I definitely encourage you to check out this video about the composer. And last but not least, some fun Node information for you. In the past week, two big PRs were merged into Node Core with new functionality that I'm very excited about. The first is that, as I talked about last week, HTTP2 support has now actually been merged into Node Core. It's not out in a release yet, as far as I know, but that means coming soon, you'll be able to easily make an HTTP2, I think there's three T's, two T's, HTTP uh, to server in your node application. The second big piece of news is that V8 version 6.0 was merged into node core as well with a backport filed for version 8.0. V8 version 6.0 actually is a big deal because that includes a big re-architecting of how V8 works itself. 
The big news with V8 version 6.0 is that they've now deprecated the old compiler called Crankshaft and they're now using a new one that was remade called TurboFan. What does that mean for you? It means that actually some of the JavaScript code that you used to be told were bad practices or would lead to slow code such as try catch will no longer be true. You'll be able to actually write try catches without worrying about any performance hit penalties because of the new V8 version. And as that comes to Node version 8.0 and future versions, it'll just mean that you'll be able to get faster JavaScript applications for free. And that's exciting. So that was this week's show. I hope you enjoyed. I hope you learned some new things. Please do subscribe if you liked what I'm talking about. Please do follow me on Twitter if you also liked what I'm talking about. And please share the video. Uh, the more people that can see this, the more I can get some feedback about what you're actually looking to learn about and sharing it with you. With that being said, this is uh, Harry Wolf signing off and see you next week.